So I think this is an interesting topic. Have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown reached untradeable status for the Celtics? Because I think the one move that has been lingering for a bit now, at least in Danny Ainge's mind, is Anthony Davis, right? Anthony Davis being on a Pelicans team that has never had the uh, talent around him to really do stuff until potentially right now with Drew Holiday getting better and trading for Miritich and we'll see what happens with DeMarcus Cousins. But even then, I do think that there is a chance that this Pelicans team could cap out at being a pretty good team, but one that is not good enough to really compete with the best teams in the Western Conference, right? And could that lead to Anthony Davis being in a situation we've seen with uh, Kyrie Irving, Jimmy Butler, DeMarcus Cousins as well, where the team he's on might want to move him instead of just losing him in free agency, right? And the team that has always been talked about with trading for Davis is, of course, the Celtics, as they're talked about uh, with trading for any star player. And, you know, if you're the Pelicans, you would want Horford, or not Horford, um, he might have to be in the move for the sake of a, a, a salary, which is another element that we'll talk about. But you'd really look at either Tatum or Jalen Brown and then draft picks as the starting point of a trade there, right? So then it becomes for the Celtics, well, as great as Anthony Davis is, and this could just not be Anthony Davis, you could also talk about Kawhi Leonard in a a move like this one as well, with everything going on with him and the Spurs. Would it really make sense for the Celtics to do that move? Would it make sense for them to even consider trading Tatum or or Jalen Brown or those two just become so good so quickly that they've become untradeable, where it would make more sense for you to keep them as opposed to trading for a player who right now is better than them, but when you take into account how good Jalen and Tatum could end up being on top of how good they are for this Celtics team combined with team culture stuff and all that, and the amount of money they're being paid right now compared to the amount of money that you would take in if you traded for like a Kawhi Leonard this offseason and the fact that you would have to move draft picks to do this. It's a pretty interesting conversation if you ask me. So the first thing you got to talk about is what is Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown's ceiling, right? Well, I think it's a bit different for the two of them. I think Tatum has the ability to be a 20 to 25 point scorer. I think we're seeing that in these playoffs, especially where even if his three pointer is not falling, he's been able to beat NBA defenders off the dribble consistently. He's been able to bail out the Celtics when possessions have not gone as well. And you can just see the ability he has to get his shot off whether it's a contested situation where he's got to take like a falling mid-range jumper or he's also been able to take some contested threes this year and he's been able to finish through contact and he's had guys contesting him at the basket and he still finishes. And I remember there was a specific play against the Sixers where he was going in a sprint with the ball with Ben Simmons like right there on him and he was able to still finish which is difficult for a lot of guys to do. Typically, when someone's going full speed with the ball, they end up kind of throwing the ball off the backboard, but Tatum was able to finish really well, and you see his ball-handling ability and all that. Dude's going to put up a lot of points in the NBA, right? And if the Celtics can have that as their third scorer, I mean, hell, he he may end up being a better scorer than Gordon Hayward. I mean, we, we got to remember Hayward at his peak has been, what, like a 21-point scorer? So Tatum could end up being better than that. So you have Kyrie, Tatum, and we'll still put Hayward and Jalen Brown in there. I mean, that could be just so much creating ability, and that could be so difficult for an opposing team to really game plan against, you know? And then you look at, well, before I go into Jalen Brown, we talk about Tatum a little bit more. He seems like a damn good rebounder. He grabbed, what, like five a game this season? And... I think defensively, he's also shown himself to be pretty damn good as well. I mean, can Tatum creep up into like the 15 best players in the league? 
yeah, I think it's on the table as of right now. I don't think it'll happen next season, but you know, you fast forward a couple years and he could be one of the 15 and maybe even for a couple seasons creep into the top 10. Now, maybe that's going a little too crazy, but I think it's fair to think he's going to be at least a top 20 player based on what we're seeing from him right now. And then you go to Jalen Brown, and I think Jalen, the defense and the athleticism is definitely better than Tatum. And offensively, he's been showing some things this series against um, Philly, or the previous series now, where he could go off the dribble and do some things. He doesn't do it as well as Tatum does, but I think he could be one of the best defenders in the league and still a, a damn good like 16 to 17 point scorer probably. Uh, especially on this Celtics team where he may end up being the fourth option offensively. Uh, But then a guy who can defend a few positions, be a terror in transition, grab a lot of rebounds, and still be a damn good offensive option for you. And when you use that and you look at this Celtics team and the, the amount of like switchability they have on defense, right? Between Tatum and Brown and then Marcus Morris and Al Horford and Gordon Hayward when he's back, and Semi Ojale, and Marcus Smart if he's still going to be here. Would that potentially be more valuable than having Anthony Davis? Well, I don't know, because Davis is a defensive nightmare himself, who is not able to switch on to, like, shooting guards all the time. It depends on the two guards. Same thing with point guards and small forwards. Uh, But I do think defensively Anthony Davis would be able to fit in here as well. And I think if Davis really did become available, if you had to trade Tatum and Jalen Brown and then, whether it be like that Grizzlies pick that gets better every season or this um, this Lakers-Kings pick that could end up being like the second pick in the draft for the Celtics, if you had to move both of them and that, I mean, even then, you could make the rationalization that that's still a good thing because then you're looking at Kyrie Irving Gordon Hayward and Anthony Davis as your like big three guys like that would be a hell of a top three and Anthony Davis under Brad Stevens probably becomes the best player in the NBA right I mean that is a hell of a return but then there are other fears like AD's injury history which he has cleaned up the last two years by the way Uh, but it still is a thing that does kind of linger on top of again just What if you ended up trading three guys in Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and whoever another pick would be that could all end up being like top, I don't know, 18 players in the NBA or something? Like at a certain point, does it become just having the one guy is more valuable than having like three great guys? I think NBA conventional wisdom would say yes, if you can get the number one guy, the one dude who can give you an advantage in any playoff series against everyone, then you get that guy, right? So I do think I would be on board with trading at least one of them for Anthony Davis. Now, another complication that comes into this is the salary, right? Because if you were going to do a straight-up trade, you'd have to probably include either Al Horford or Hayward in the deal, which I don't know if the Pelicans would totally want that. If you're going to trade Anthony Davis, you probably want to go all in on a rebuild rather than getting just a veteran back. Well, a veteran in, like, picks, I should say. And I think a similar thing could be said with the Spurs and Kawhi Leonard. So you'd probably have to get a third team involved, and that would create extra stuff. But if you were really determined to make this sort of thing happen, then I think it it would happen. If we can dive into Kawhi a bit more... I gotta be honest, I don't know if I'd make the move. Just because of all this extra stuff that is out there now where I don't know how his quad is. I don't know if he's going to be a distraction. I know there's been talk of his uncle or whatever maybe inflating his head a little bit too much. And I don't know if I would want to welcome in all that and add a significant amount of money to my salary cap and a guy who's going to take over my offense a lot of the time for it to not be like a home run, this is going to work sort of thing, you know? So I think that's where I fall on this, where I think Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and future draft picks for the Celtics 
it's all fantastic stuff. And while I wouldn't love trading any of that, if Anthony Davis became available, and I, I don't think it's like ridiculous to believe that could happen, but I think there's also a decent chance that the Pelicans are on the upswing here. But if that were to happen, if I didn't have to give up all of that for Horford or for Anthony Davis, then I'd be okay with it. Like, imagine if you could trade for Anthony Davis and you still had Jalen Brown on your roster. Like, that would be incredible if you think about that for a moment. So it's all pretty interesting stuff. And Danny Ainge is a GM who is always looking to do something. And whenever the guy has gone out on a ledge for a player or whoever... He's pretty much gotten it right every time. I mean, the Kyrie Irving trade was a resounding success. By the way, I was very wrong on the Kyrie trade. Basically, every opinion I had on that move, the opposite happened, so that was cool. I'm glad to be wrong, because I'm a Celtics fan. Um, Nailed it with the Jason Tatum thing, so... Yeah. Anyway, I think that'll do it for this. It's a pretty interesting conversation that may end up never having any life to it because the Pelicans will be fine, AD will resign, Kawhi Leonard. Who knows what will happen with that situation, but it may not end up being a big deal. I don't know. 